Brothers and sisters, I would like to start my khutbah today with a reflection on an incident that happened in Philadelphia around two weeks ago. Maybe some of us have heard it in the news where a woman was assaulted. She got attacked and assaulted in a train around 11 p.m. And this made it to the news. And uh, what was very concerning about this event that happened Many times, it's not the first time, unfortunately, it won't be the last time. But what is, what's concerning about this event is that many people, a handful of men, were around when this took place. None of them helped, none of them called the police. Some reports estimated that the event took place around eight minutes, and some reports go as far as 40 minutes, four zero minutes, and people were watching were live streaming. Some of them actually live streamed the event. They were recording it on their phone, but they did not interfere and correct and or try to stop or even call the 911. Now, someone would like to call this a bystander effect in psychology, where people feel that they don't want to interfere. But let me pause for a second and be very frank about it. We live in a society that is fed by many philosophies. And some of those thoughts, we hear them every day. Mind your own business. Live and let live. We live in a society that is obsessed by watching reality TV and shows that people got desensitized to watching violence online. And let's be honest about it and let's be frank about it. People got desensitized to watching zina, adultery and fornication, being committed online. What's known as a word that starts with a P. I wouldn't mention it on the minbar. And I'm not, gonna, I'm not here to defend and say this won't happen in a Muslim country. Because I believe that Muslim countries are exposed to the same shows, to the same internet, to the same philosophies as here. So I would like to take us back to a contrast that was given by a British author, Michael Cook where he narrates about a similar event that took place back in 1988. A woman was assaulted, and there were bystanders who did not interfere, who did not try to stop and correct the action. What's very interesting, and he writes this in an introduction to a famous book that I will mention in a second. What's very interesting, he talks about those bystanders and what went into their minds. When those bystanders looked at the woman, when she was assaulted, when she was raped, she was smiling. And they were confused. Is this act consensual or not? Did she really want this to happen to her or not? It turned out after investigation that this criminal forced her to smile. And the author, non-Muslim author, brings this story in the introduction to his famous book, Commanding Right and Forbidding Wrong in Islamic Thought. He was talking about us. He was talking about Muslims. He was talking about how Muslims will never, if they apply Islam, will never allow such event to happen because we have this idea, ideology, command of enjoying good and forbidding the evil. And he compares the Muslim society with modern day Christians in his own words where they look at their church as though they are offsprings, children of a father. So they don't have any responsibility. The patriarchy in the church made modern day Christians assume no responsibility to enjoin the good and forbid the evil. Whereas Muslims look at the society as we are brothers. We are passengers in the same boat, in the same ship. And it is our responsibility to go around and make sure nobody crosses the boundaries and poke a hole into this ship. So let's pause and ask ourselves, what is the social responsibility of a Muslim? Let's forget about live and let live. Let's forget about minding our own business and ask ourselves, what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala want us to do? Without this postmodern philosophies that have penetrated our thoughts and really messed up our ideas and thoughts as Muslims. Allah says in the Quran, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem, وَلْتَكُنْ مِنْكُمْ أُمَّةً let, the, let there be among you a nation, a community, a group of people unified under one cause. 
يَدْعُونَ إِلَى الْخَيْرِ They invite towards all that is good. وَيَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ And they enjoin the good. And يَأْمُرُونَ is an interesting word. It could mean encourage. It could mean suggest. It could mean advice. But it could mean command. Based on the context. As we will see shortly. يَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ All that what is good. مَنْ عَرَفَ يَعْرُفُ This is the universally accepted good. وَيَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ And they forbid and stop and try their best to advise against that what is wrong. وَيَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ And of course, this ma'roof and this munkar is defined by what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants. Not by what people at every time and age believe to be right and wrong. Another ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, كُنْتُمْ خَيْرَ أُمَّةٍ أُخْرِجَتْ لِلنَّاسِ you were the best nation that was brought out to mankind. In another ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala details more what falls under ma'roof and what falls under munkar. Allah says, Inna Allah, we hear this a lot in the khutbas. Inna Allah ya'muru bil adli wal ihsani wa ita'i dhil qurba. Allah commands towards justice, adl. And justice is the bare minimum of your duties and responsibilities towards yourself, make sure you give yourself its right, towards your family members, towards your community, towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Bil adli. So adl is the bare minimum, the justice. The maximum is al ihsan, excellence, towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To worship Allah as though you see Him. If you cannot see Him, let you have to know that He sees you. وَالْإِحْسَانِ وَإِتَاءِ ذِي الْقُرْبَى And because we forget about justice and ihsan when it comes to our family members. Allah says وَإِتَاءِ ذِي الْقُرْبَى Specifically, when it comes to your direct or extended family members to have adl and ihsan. وَيَنْهَا And Allah forbids about الْفَحْشَاءِ Lewd, indecent behavior. Committing or spreading or promoting indecent behavior like adultery and fornication and homosexuality. وَالْمُنْكَرْ يَعِذُكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَذَكَّرُونَ So we are contrasted with two images. We are talking about two different words. One word where people are all bystanders. Bystanders. And they're not expected to do anything. And we have in our Islamic thought, in our Islamic theology, in our Islamic understanding, the hadith of Prophet Muhammad wasallam, which details what are the responsibilities, the social responsibility of a Muslim. And what's true in the social sense is true in a political sense. Because politics is not something distant from our lives. It touches everything we do. It touches our economy. It touches our schools. It touches everything about our lives. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, beautiful hadith, we've heard it many times. Man ra'a minkum munkaran. Whoever sees an evil, wrongdoing, فَلْيُغَيِّرْهُ بِيَدِهِ Let him change it by hand, by force. فَإِن لَمْ يَسْتَطِعْ فَبِلِسَانِهِ if he cannot make it, if he cannot afford to do it, let him try to change it with his tongue. If he cannot change it, let him change it with his heart. And this is the weakest level of faith. And subhanAllah, it shows us that we all have a responsibility. If you're a ruler, if you have authority in your business, in your company, and you see a munkar, you see wrongdoing, you don't go about changing it with your heart. No, you have. Authority. If you're a parent and you see some bad habit in your kids and they're still young and you can change them, you have to enforce some rules. Yes, you have to be nice about it. You have to be wise about it. You have to know some terbiya, some education when you do it. But you have a responsibility. For most of us, with your tongue, speak out. Advocate on it. Go and raise awareness. Go and vote against the policy. And invite every community member to go and vote. And yes, we all know elections, local elections are coming. And sometimes we in, in, in Muslims, we might debate about the validity of elections when it comes to presidential elections. Because we always have to go to the lesser of two evils option. But what about local elections? What about elections that touch our schools, our taxes, that touch our economy, our roads? Why don't we have a voice? Why don't we have a say? Why don't we have a strong opinion on it? And alhamdulillah, more and more we have more Muslims running. 
And we should realize that changing a munkar and voting and advocacy is not a one-time thing that happens every two years. It's a continuous process of enjoining the good and forbidding the evil. And the hadith says, فَإِن لَمْ يَسْتَطِعْ the, 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 the weakest level of faith in your heart to, as some scholars mentioned, to say, اللهم إن هذا منكر لا أرض به Yalla, this is wrongdoing. This is evil. I'm not happy with it. And this is the weakest level of faith. But to normalize evil, to normalize wrongdoing, and to assume it's normal, this is what's very concerning that's happening around us. And we should make sure that we have this mindset of changing munkar as believers. We see that in Surah Al-Kahf, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed us three stories about three different cases. One of them involved changing munkar with people's heart, the youth in the cave. They didn't have a say. They were a minority within a minority. They could not even stand up. If they were to speak against the oppressor who was worshipping idols and enforcing that disbelief on the community, they will be killed immediately. They secluded themselves. They're changing munkar. Their only way to change the munkar, seclude yourself, go to the cave. That was the only plan. What was their achievement? That they preserved their faith. They did not normalize the munkar, the disbelief in their own hearts. We have another story in Surah Al-Kahf. A man with two gardens and his materialistic life led him to disbelief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and reject the afterlife. His friend, his neighbor, he advised him, he reminded him, hey, don't be deluded by this material life. And we have a story of Dhul Qarnayn, a king who was given unmatched resources, strong armies, fluency in many languages, and mashallah, he was given good management skills to manage this huge army. He went to the east, he went to the west, and he enforced justice, and he enforced prosperity for all the nations that he visited. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give all of us back, to revive this spirit of enjoining the good and forbidding the evil within our own circles and within the wisdom, al-hikmah, wal-maw'id al-hasana that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches in the Qur'an. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم فاستغفروه فيا فوز المستغفرين الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى لا سيما نبينا المصطفى ومن بسنته وآثاره اقتدى واقتفى واكتفى Dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us a word view Allah gave us a method Allah gave us a way to run our lives and to strive our best to protect ourselves, our iman, our faith, and then our families, and then our community, and then the whole world from evil that we say, that we see and do. And this means an activism and the political sphere to make sure that our voices are heard, that we voice our opinions. And that's why even in, in, in an election where you don't control the outcomes, you are, after all, we are a minority. And we many times, we have two outcomes in every election, and this is especially true in the presidential race, where both are not ideal for us. But this is where our scholars give more details and advice to go and choose the lesser of two evils. But the more important part is to get used to this habit, to this obligation, to this farida of enjoining the good and forbidding the evil. And when it, what, what's correct in the political sphere is definitely correct in our social spheres. When we see abuse happening around us, when we see injustice, when we see someone abandoning the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, someone not caring about their afterlife, someone not caring about their kids and their future, someone not caring about their spirituality. Again, ud'u ila sabili rabbika bil hikmati wal al hasana. Call unto the way of your Lord with wisdom and the best of speech. One of my friends, he narrates the story that happened in a Muslim country in Ramadan, in the last 10 nights of Ramadan, where he was in his car going around his friends, picking them up to go to Atikaf. And when they were there, they saw this car stopped by the road and it, a bunch of youth, all of them are Muslims, 
most of them are men except one woman and they were drunk and they were dancing. And when he saw this, subhanAllah, he was so offended. How do these youth not know about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not recognize Ramadan, not recognize the blessed night of the last 10 nights of Ramadan. And he went there and he wanted to advise them. He gave them nasiha in this very awkward situation. And he told them, if you respected that girl, you wouldn't let her come with you in this situation, in this case, with this unmodest clothing that she was wearing. He didn't want to talk bad about her. He didn't say she did not respect herself. He was telling to those men to reclaim their manhood and their Muslim manners. And of course, they were offended and they were fighting back and forth. They told him, why do you care about us? We want to go to the hellfire anyway. Why do you care about us? And of course, my friend re remained in his manners and he left that scene. And subhanAllah, he was giving nasiha to the five youth that were, the, that, that were there. One of them came to him afterwards. Few minutes, told him, to be honest, I don't want to go to Jahannam. I don't want to go to the hellfire. I want to repent, but I don't know how. And there and then, subhanAllah, that kid, that guy, started with my friend, his journey back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You may give da'wah, you may give nasiha, you may give advice, you may do activism in a certain direction and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts the fruits and the results in, in, in a different way because you don't control the results. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who controls the hearts. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us that confidence, to give us that faridah, that honor that made this nation the best nation brought out to mankind to enjoy the good and forbid the evil and belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma aghfir lana dhunubana wa israfana fi amrina wa thabbit aqdamana wa ansurna ala al-qawm al-kafirin. Allahumma inna na'udhu bika an nadilla aw nudal aw nazilla aw nuzal aw nazlima aw nuzlam aw najhala wujhala alayna. Allahumma ahdina wa ahdi bina wa ajalna sababan liman ihtada wa ahdi al-nasa ala aydina. Allahumma ajalna hudatan mahdigin غير ضالين ولا مضلين سلما لأوليائك حربنا على أدائك يا رب العالمين اللهم ولي علينا خيارنا واصرف عنا شرارنا اللهم ولي علينا خيارنا واصرف عنا شرارنا اللهم ولي علينا خيارنا واصرف عنا شرارنا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين وصل الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وأقم الصلاة إن صلاة تنهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر